Hi, I'm Todd with Arvid Dog Rehab and Fitness, and today we're going to talk about pain. How can you tell if your dog is in pain when your dog can't speak? Well, there's four main ways that you can tell if your dog is in pain, and it's four changes in different things. So changes in sleep, changes in mood, changes in movement, and changes in appearance. If there are any of these differences or changes that you notice, there's a good chance that your dog is in pain. And at the end of the video, we're going to talk about different things you can do at home to help with that discomfort if you're able to determine that. And we'll go through some brief examples of that too. So let's talk about these four different areas of change. Uh, the first one being sleep. So dogs are just like people. If they're not feeling good, they're going to be less active. And that means they may tend to sleep a lot. Uh, the easiest way to avoid discomfort is to not move. So if you notice your dog laying around or sleeping a lot more, it might not be that they're lazy, it may be because they're having discomfort and they don't want to move, they don't feel like it. Now, other changes in sleep can be restlessness at night. Number one, if they're sleeping all day, they're not going to be as tired and willing to just lay down and not move at night. The other thing is, is that it may be difficult for them to find a comfortable position, especially if they're having trouble lying down or getting up or getting down. They may not be able to tolerate a prolonged position at night and have to frequently shift positions. So those are the two main things that you're going to notice, either an increase in sleeping or an increase in restlessness with changes in sleep. All right, let's talk about changes in movement. Uh, your dog may not want to go for as long a walks as they used to because they're having discomfort. They may not be jumping up and down off the couch like they used to. Uh, they may not want to even play. Playing might be painful. You may see them avoiding hardwood floors or tile floors because they're afraid of slipping. Maybe they don't want to go up and down the stairs again like they used to, or they're not comfortable, or they're apprehensive, or they go flying down the stairs because they don't have enough strength and control in order to walk down normally. All of these changes in movement can be signs that your dog is having pain. The third thing would be changes in your dog's mood. Now, changes in a dog's mood can be, maybe they seem a little grouchy, you know, same as being maybe sleepy and laying around, or they're withdrawn and they're just not engaged like they used to. Maybe they just don't seem to have that, that happy puppy face like they used to have. These can all be signs of having discomfort. Do they growl when you try to pick them up or you touch them or pet them? Or do they wince or move away from you? Maybe they get growly at their other, at other dogs or animals in, in the house when they try to play with them. These can all be ways of them trying to avoid discomfort. It may be painful to be touched or lifted. So look for these signs as well. The fourth area of change is changes in appearance. And this can be anything from the way they stand to the way that they sit, the way they lie down. Uh, also, maybe muscles are getting smaller or their legs getting skinnier. Let's talk about these different areas. So first of all, a normal dog is, or a happy, healthy dog, let's say that versus normal. A healthy dog is going to have their head up, their tail up, there's a curve in their spine, and they look like they're ready to move and they have a readiness posture. Dogs that are having more discomfort can tend to have their head lowered. They can have their, their weight shifted forward. You'll notice that their weight is heavy on their front legs. Uh, they're having trouble maybe looking up sometimes, or they seem like they're just tired all the time. They can also end up being light in their rear legs because of the weight being shifted forward. Now, a lot of these are also signs of, normal signs of aging in dogs. And as they get older, they tend to shift their weight forward and lean forward. But this is also a sign of discomfort. And what they're typically doing is they're avoiding discomfort on their back end. Maybe there's stiffness in their low back, or they pull the muscle in their back legs, and thus they're leaning their weight forward. Many times we see dogs come in that have a limp on their front legs, and people think it's the injury in the front legs, when actually the front leg is limping because it's fatigued because there's been so much weight on the back legs. So that's something that we notice a lot here at our uh, Other changes in appearance can be a hunchiness in the back, which is a weight shift forward again. Just like with people, as they get older, they tend to shift their weight forward as they're aging versus a young person with great posture. Dogs are the same way. So those changes in posture are very significant. In addition, a strange sit. You can have a dog sitting funny with their legs out or a curve in their back. They have a hunch in their back where their feet are not planted on the ground. This makes it difficult for them to get up. You'll notice that maybe they're trying to pull themselves up with their front legs. And this is all because they're usually stiff in their spine or there's discomfort in their low back or hip. So changes in a sitting posture are also signs of discomfort and pain. Another thing that you may notice is changes in size of the muscles. 
the size of their limbs. Uh, so a lot of times if you're not putting weight on your back legs, you don't use it, you're gonna lose it. And the muscles will get smaller. You may notice one leg being smaller than the other. Uh, or even muscles, their gluteal muscles in the back just because they're not using their back legs. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to measure that. Okay, so let's talk about detecting muscle atrophy. Dogs get lighter and smaller in their back legs when they shift their weight forward, as we talked about with pain avoidance. And the easiest way for us to go ahead and determine if there's any atrophy is feeling the muscles. There's two key muscles. Earl is in the perfect position to talk about the glute muscles. So the butt muscle on a dog is on both sides of the tail. And you can feel right here whether there's a decrease in size. So touching your fingers along this area, if one is bonier than the other, then they're not using it. That's going to be atrophy. Atrophy is a fancy word for muscle disuse, okay, or muscle wasting. And this happens when you don't use a muscle. No different than you breaking your arm and having it in the cast and then you take the cast off and the muscle's all skinny. It's the same thing if you don't use a muscle and dogs will show that either in the glutes or also in the quad. So the quad is another good area that you can measure on your own. And so what you can do is we can have your dog standing. So let's get you up Earl, come on up, good boy. And you're just gonna go ahead and put your hand in this type of position and feel the quad. So this is his right quad. My same hand on the other, my hand on the other side will be on the left and you can just kind of gently squeeze and if one feels thicker than the other, then most likely that's the one they're using and they're not using the other one. So in many cases, dogs are right legged. It seems to be dominant versus the left. So the left side in the majority of dogs is going to be a little bit smaller, but we're talking 10% not much more than that. If you feel a significant difference in the size, they're probably not using that leg. So that's a sign of muscle atrophy, and that's a change in the appearance of a dog, most likely due to pain. They're not using it because they're avoiding it, because they injured it before, and now it's weak and they don't use it. Another thing you can do in addition to heat is massage, and we have several videos on this YouTube channel to show you massage of the low back, the neck and shoulders and the hips and hind legs. Pretty much all the areas you need to do. So I would recommend checking out those videos too to give your dog a hand. In addition to that, things you can do around the house is avoiding slippery areas. You can use yoga mats on hardwood floors or tile floors. There's also different tools that you can use such as booties, uh, toe grips and toe treads. And we'll probably do another video about toe treads because I highly recommend them. We've had a lot of success here using them with our patients. Other than that, you just want to be sure that you are attentive to your dog, to be sure that there are any changes happening, that you're aware of them, and you address them sooner rather than later. Uh, keeping an eye on your aging dog to notice if their head is lowering or they're getting up a little more slowly and all those things, early intervention can increase their lifespan and their quality of life. All right, so I hope this information was helpful to you and I look forward to presenting you with some more information. If you enjoyed this information, go ahead and Hit the subscribe button and would love to show you some more videos. So thank you very much.